What is pain reprocessing therapy? In this video, I'm gonna explain what pain reprocessing therapy is and the five main elements of this model. So my clinic, Pain Psychotherapy Canada, and my other agency, Embody Community, utilize pain reprocessing therapy. So I'm using this with our clients. All the therapists on my team are trained in pain reprocessing therapy. And in addition, I have a digital course, which has a lot of strategies and techniques from pain reprocessing therapy. So I'm going to put those links down below so you all have them. Now, pain reprocessing therapy, it's a system of psychological techniques that's meant to retrain your brain out of chronic pain and symptoms. Now, pain reprocessing therapy, it's meant to treat neuroplastic pain or symptoms. And we know a lot of chronic pain and symptoms are actually neuroplastic in nature. So what this means is neuroplastic pain or symptoms are not due to structural damage or disease in the body, but due to psychophysiologic processes in the brain. It's a big term, psychophysiologic processes. What does that mean? It means that your emotions, your thinking, your behaviors, stress that you're dealing with, any trauma can actually rewire the brain to produce chronic pain and symptoms. And so what happens, for example, if you have back pain that's neuroplastic, safe signals are going up from your back, telling your brain light amount of pressure, no cause for alarm, neutral sensation. But your brain, due to feeling in danger, starts to misinterpret those safe signals coming up from the body, and then it clicks on pain or physical symptoms, even though the body's completely healthy. And like I said, a lot of chronic pain and symptoms are actually neuroplastic in nature, which means that physical treatments are not going to be effective. And what is going to be effective is treatments such as pain reprocessing therapy. And in my approach that I utilize called the somatic safety method, we pull a lot from pain reprocessing therapy. Now, I'm not just making this up. There's research to support this. So several years ago, they did a big clinical trial on pain reprocessing therapy, and they did it with people with chronic persistent back pain. And in the study, in the PRT group, pain reprocessing therapy group, they had people do nine psychological treatments of pain reprocessing therapy. And by the end of the study, about 98% had pain reductions and 66% of participants became pain-free or nearly pain-free. Not only that, but when they followed up a year later with these participants, the majority of them that had achieved pain-free or nearly pain-free remained that way. So pain reprocessing therapy is a really effective treatment. Now, I'm gonna break down what the strategies are in this treatment, and we're gonna go through five main elements that make it up. Let's dive into it. Number one, pain and physical symptom education. A lot of the education out there on chronic pain and symptoms, it's just not correct. It's not up to date. And in pain reprocessing therapy, we provide the correct, accurate, up-to-date, pain and physical symptom education of why pain and symptoms are actually triggered and how we can actually treat them and how the brain and the nervous system is very involved in this process. Now, if you're new to neuroplastic pain or symptoms, I have a really in detail video as well as many other videos on this channel around education on chronic pain and symptoms but I'll put this one video up top and I'll put it in the description down below. So if you want a really basic 101 breakdown of neuroplastic pain and symptoms, check, check that out. But a big part of pain reprocessing therapy is the correct education. Education is vital because otherwise we're hearing from all these other medical professionals that our pain is permanent, it's never gonna go away. And that is just not the case. And so education is really key here. Now, the creator of pain reprocessing therapy named Alan Gordon, 
also has a great book called The Way Out. And I'll put the link down below for The Way Out. I'm not being paid to say this. It's a great book. It's really short and you can go check it out. There's also an audio book, which uh, you can utilize if you don't like reading. Number two, gathering evidence that your pain or physical symptoms are neuroplastic in nature. You are not just going to start to believe that your pain or physical symptoms are neuroplastic. We need to help the logical parts of our brain, the, the evidence parts, the, the parts that want reason. We need to help them believe that our pain and physical symptoms are not doing, are not because of physical damage in the body, but due to processes in the brain that are taking place. This is vital because if the brain keeps believing that the body's physically damaged in a major way, even if the body's healthy, the brain will keep producing chronic pain or symptoms. So gathering evidence, we have a set of criteria that we go through for neuroplastic pain and symptoms. And I, the first session I have with anyone, I'm going through these criteria because I want to help them increase that belief that their pain and physical symptoms are neuroplastic. This is actually part of the treatment because if we can start to believe that our body's safe and healthy, that pain sensation can, or physical sensation, it can actually start to be reduced. Now I have a video where I walk through how you can gather evidence. I'll put that to the top and down below. So be sure to check that out. Number three, somatic tracking. Ooh, somatic tracking. If you're not new to my channel, I have a lot of somatic tracking videos that you've probably listened to. I put a lot of free content out and I'm doing this with every single client that I work with. Now what somatic tracking is, it is a brain retraining exercise. We are trying to retrain our brain to respond to the pain or physical symptom sensations differently. Often when we have pain or physical symptoms, we respond with fear, frustration, despair, annoyance, anger. But that emotional response will actually start to perpetuate chronic pain and symptoms. They call this the pain-fear cycle. So if you have pain or physical symptoms and you respond with fear, frustration, despair, annoyance, anger, your brain then feels more in danger and it produces more pain or symptoms. More pain or symptoms, more dysregulation, emotional dysregulation, and the cycle can go on and on. I've seen people caught in this cycle for decades. And so somatic tracking is meant to break that. And so we don't need to change your pain or physical symptoms. Our goal here is to actually change the emotional response to help the primitive parts of your brain understand that we're actually safe even though the sensation is taking place. Now I'll link a somatic tracking video to the top and down below, but be sure to check this out. It is vital in healing neuroplastic pain and symptoms. Number four, Addressing emotions. Emotions and chronic pain and symptoms are very interlinked. There's a lot of overlap in the brain. And if we do not feel safe with emotions, we are not able to approach them, to attend to them, to learn how to move through them and release them, it's gonna keep us in chronic pain and symptoms. I've had a lot of people that don't wanna to touch on emotions and the results aren't great. Emotions are vital. We need to change the internal process of how we're attending to them and moving through them. Now, I have a sadness practice. It has my own twist on it. Uh, so it's not purely from pain reprocessing therapy, but it is a somatic practice for exploring and releasing emotions. I'll link that to the top and down below because in pain reprocessing therapy, they teach people how to somatically attend to their emotions and actually cultivate a sense of safety. We don't even need to make the emotion go away. We just need to remove the fear, the resistance to the actual emotion. So check out that sadness practice. Uh, it has some movement involved in it because I utilize that in my own approach, the somatic safety method, but it can be really helpful. If you can't do the movement because of where you're at with your pain or symptoms, that's okay. Just follow along and even visualize it. So check that video out. It's the last time I'll say it. Now, the other thing in pain reprocessing therapy when they talk about addressing emotions is 
things that behaviors that are inducing a state of fear that perpetuate a state of high alerts and high intensity. This is things like worrying, self-criticism, pressure. A lot of people with neuroplastic pain and symptoms struggle with these, myself included. I myself recovered from neuroplastic pain and I had to reduce these behaviors. I'm a worrier, I put a lot of pressure on myself and I'm self-critical. Now I have a great skill from pain reprocessing therapy that I did a video on called the three R skill. I'll link it to the top and put it down below. It's great for reducing these behaviors that are keeping us on high alert. So be sure to check that out. And finally, number five, increasing pleasant sensations. When we've had chronic pain or symptoms for a prolonged period of time, our brain naturally gravitates in that direction. It gravitates towards those unpleasant sensations that we really you know, don't wanna focus on. They're awful. I've been there and I totally get it. But your brain is just drawn there over and over again. And it gets really good at this. It gets really good at learning to focus on what's unpleasant inside. Part of pain reprocessing therapy is increasing pleasant sensations. And so we can increase a felt sense of safety, increase feelings of lightness and ease, increase feelings of self-compassion. All of this is vital. We want to teach our brain through conscious awareness that it can gravitate towards pleasant things inside. Because one of the best ways to cultivate a felt sense of safety in the body is to increase our ability to attend to pleasant sensations or pleasant experiences. So I hope this video was helpful on what pain reprocessing therapy is. Please put your questions or comments down below, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll talk to you next week. Take care.